We're here with Kevin Fairburn for the Road to the Dominion interview. Kev, how did you become involved in harness racing? Um, well, I suppose courts it's because I had a grandfather that stood a couple of stallions. I had a couple of uncles that were pretty handy horsemen, like one was Doug Watts. Um, Dad was a bit of an amateur trainer, so I sort of trained the odd one or two and then decided to make it a bit better than that. You trained your first winner in 1989. Do you remember this well? Um, I think it was at Timaru, a horse called Double By. Ricky May drove it, and it would be one of the only two mile maiden races I've held at Timaru. What is the best part of being involved in harness racing? Um, oh, the people you meet, but I suppose when you breed them, seeing them a lot, your kids see them grow up to to be something. Um, I wear my heart on my sleeve a bit when it's talking about my horses, you know. They just like, you know, family to me and I don't like selling them to dud trainers because, you know, it makes the family look poor. But yeah, I suppose it's breeding them courts really, yeah. You won the 2006 Dominion with What's Under My Kilt. Talk us through the emotion you felt when you won this race. <laughs> Before or after courts? <laughs> Both. <laughs> Before, I'll be honest with you, I thought I had a very, very good show of Quinella in it. Uh, what's under my kilt had gone huge in the free for all, in the wet, which he was bloody near hopeless in the wet, but like he went huge, he might have run about six to seven, but he just got shuffled back and run home real good. And the other horse, Glenn Bogle, well, he had gone good. But um, yeah, he was a bit of a, a mixed emotions afterwards because I honestly thought I should have quinella it. They swing for home and wider up some direction. Into the straight, the last 200 metres. Jasmine's gift from what's under McKilt and further out on the track, one over Kenny and Glenn Bogle. It's Jasmine's gift, what's under McKilt. And down the very outside is one over Kenny, Jasmine's gift. But what's under McKilt getting through? What's under McKilt? So as you said, you had Glenn Bogle and What's Under My Kilt in the Dominion that year, and they both had really positive lead-up races, with What's Under My Kilt winning the Ashburton Flying Mile and the Kaikoura Free For All. Which horse were you most confident with going into the race? Tell you the truth, Glenn Bogle. Um, he'd gone super on, I think it was Cup Day. And, um, yeah, Scotty was a wee bit... How would you put it? What's Under My Kilt like? He was a wee bit... Been a son on a wee bit... Two mile was a bit hard for a son on them days, but Shane gave him such a super trip. Like, you know, you could not have asked for a better drive from the fella. And, um, yeah, I'd, I'd have to say, I, I thought Glenn Bogle would have won it, and I thought the other horse would have run second, but, you know. You've won 166 races as a trainer. Was the Dominion win the most satisfying for you? Yes and no. Um, one that will always stick in my mind was winning a... I think it was a maiden or a C1 at Methven with a horse called Plumpton's Pride. One of the owners was dying of cancer, a young fellow about 27. And um, Frank was his name, hell of a nice fella. And like, that was a highlight of his life. Yeah, they buried him with the photo, he won the photo of the horse buried with him, so yeah. That would have been, you know, I suppose the most, uh, most emotional one. The other ones were, you know, were lovely to win them, but nothing to, you know, pull your heartstrings. It does sound very special. Glenn Bogle and What's Under My Kilt now live a life of leisure in your paddock and it must feel pretty good knowing that they have had and will have a place with you for life. Oh yeah, well you know, they, a couple of the owners thought they should be sold off but you know, I thought they'd done a super job and taken the owners to a lot of places they'd never been in their life, you know, like on racing scenes so, you know, they, they didn't deserve to be just hacked around for the sake of an extra few dollars. So yeah, I pulled the plug on him. I kept one going, Glenn Bogle, because he'd done a hind suspension in Australia after Bull Collins Mile. It wasn't his fault. He got sort of hung up in a fence with somebody that when I wasn't there. And um, I kept him going because Kathy Glenn was she was had cancer bad, so and she loved the horse. So I kept him going just the last bit for her. So yeah, it's, you know, a few, few many, you know, how would you put it? A few. Um, 
a few little stories to go with them, you know. So, yeah, they'll always stay here. So. Glenn Bogle's now 19 and what's under my kilt, 20. What are they like as horses now? Do they have any funny characteristics? They're not much different caught from when they were about eight or nine. <laughs> you wouldn't know the 20 and 19. They're as um, silly as rabbits as they used to be. What's under my kilt, he was just, a, just an out and out dick. <laughs> First time we took him to qualify at Addington, he jumped the fence up Queen's Lane. Carts one side and he's the other. And like, yeah, it took him 17 starts to win a race, but like, um, he was a real clown, but by across the motor, you know. Was there something about him that made you carry on? I mean, that's a quite a few starts to, to carry on with a trotter um, and not give up. Um, if you ever look at some of his early races, you'll see why we kept him going. He ran an awful lot of seconds and thirds and given him half a furlong start. No, he had a huge motor, but he just didn't have the brains and savvy to go with it. But after, he, after that, he came a really great horse, really. And this year, in this year's Dominion, you've nominated Ruthless Kayla. Um, so still trying to get a start in that. Um, what's your plan with her um, in the lead-up races? Oh, just, you know, people underestimate her a wee bit. Um, she's always in the money and she's always running on. And like, oh, I don't know what, what sort of type she is. And she's virtually idiot-proof. So like, in them big races, you have to be idiot-proof to get the money. So, like, she's got gate speed, so I'll just put her in them races. If she doesn't get a start, she doesn't get a start. But, hey, she's lost nothing, and she'll have all that experience for next year.